And this is where we left off in yesterday's episode. No, we did not glue ourselves to the railing. Um, let's see if we can just get this more horizontal now. All right, I'm not gonna glue this one on yet. I think I'll wait and see if I can do both of these at the same time. Okay, we got the number one, number two, number three, number four. It's just got to be just a little bit more bent down here. Um, all right, let's move ourselves over onto this side and get number two, number three, and number four on this side. Yeah, I think it's going to look okay. Now I'd like to straighten this one out if I can here, but it's, uh... Maybe if I carefully come down, very carefully, and squeeze... Yeah, that kind of helped. Okay, now we're going to have to cut it off. Um... Okay, now to get at a good angle here, I think I'm going to have to move you over just a little bit. Okay, I think we can both see pretty good now. And uh, this one here, I think I'm going to try and not have it as short as I, or rather as long as the other one. Was too short. I made it too short. Well, you know what? I think what I'll do is I'll just leave it. I'm not going to try and extend it or anything. It's just going to have to, just going to have to be there. And at normal viewing distance, you will not be able to tell that that is not touching. Oh, well, it's not the end of the world. Now I was just thinking here, you know, this little mistake, it might actually be kind of a blessing in disguise because you remember what happened on the other side when I tried to glue it, that very same one. Yeah, put half a pound of glue on there. Okay, so let's cut this one right about right there. I have to remember to speak a little bit more clearly because I noticed yesterday a lot of times my voice sort of trailed off into oblivion. Now how did this one come? Yeah, that's believable. That's quite believable. Now, it's difficult to get the exposure exactly right here because of the dark background, but I think it's going to be all right. And this is a small finishing nail that I'm using as a battering ram. I just want to push it in there. Now, Should I be lifting this up just a little, maybe? No, I think that that looks like it matches up to the other side. Just let me get down that angle differently here. Yeah, that seems to match up with the one on the other side. Now remember, you don't have to give it a bath. to go. Okay. But you know what? Seeing the point of my needle there, 
Reminds me, I wanted to do an experiment. You know, we're talking about glue applicators and all that kind of stuff. And hey, you know that almost sticks there in the right place all by itself for some reason. Oh, it hooked underneath this one. That's what happened. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to do an experiment now. And uh, I'll explain as we do it. Okay, here's what's happened. Over the last year and a half or whatever that I've been making this model, I must have at least a hundred times had people recommend to me to use the to use a pin or a needle and the point of the pin to apply the CA glue onto something in a very minute fashion. And it seems to me I tried that and it did not work. I just got another comment again today. And, uh, you know, can a hundred people be wrong, be, be, be wrong, and I'm the only one that's right? Um, so I'm going to try it again. I'm going to make a little mark. I'm being very careful not to touch this with my finger and get grease on it, because that's going to adversely affect the, the way the CA glue will, will react on, on steel. But I had quite a problem getting this clean. Uh, when I first cleaned it, I thought I, I, or, or I was wanted to check and see how sharp it was. So I looked under the microscope and I could see all kinds of little things on it. So I thought, well, that's odd. So I used my uh, my uh, microfiber cloth here that I use sometimes for cleaning the lens on my camera, and it, it still was stuff on there. So then I used isopropyl on the cloth, and still there was stuff on there. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do here? So. I put it in my ultrasonic cleaner about 10 minutes ago. It's clean now. There's no little tiny nothings on it. So anyway, um, that was unusual. I couldn't get it clean with this. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make a little mark. I think probably probably on this thing right here. We'll just sort of make it right, right in the middle here. Just, just a little mark. Now you probably can't see that from way back there, but we'll be able to see it. And then I'm going to put my super macro on the camera and uh, get in as close as I can and just see what is going wrong here when I dip the point of the needle into the CA glue and then try to apply a minute amount either in that little mark we just made or beside it. You'll be able to see it. We should be able to see what is wrong here. Why does a needle not work for me? Uh, you know, could it be that maybe it's going to work and I'm going to feel like a fool? I don't know. If that's what happens, hey, I'll show it. Okay, we're going to use uh, CA Medium here. Because that's what I use the most. And I have been very careful to not touch the point of my needle. Um... Maybe I should get my other glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing better. And once again, I'm not as prepared as I should be. Now everything in front of that little dimple that you see there and everything behind it will be blurred. But hopefully... Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to dip the needle in and pull it out. Now, once again, you're going to be able to see this better than me. Steady myself here. Well, I'm I'm not seeing anything coming off just with the, with these glasses. Maybe you can see something. I'll dip it again. Oops, I bumped it. Now i got to move it back. Just hang on. Well, ho hopefully that's uh, still there in focus for you. Okay, I've dipped it again. And here we come. I'll steady myself. Okay, now I, I can see where the CA glue has sort of, you might say, wicked itself up the pin, the, the, uh, the point of the needle, but I don't think it's wicking. I think it's a surface tension thing going on there. Uh, let's try this again. OK, 
Okay, when you try to adjust something like this in the monitor, everything is backwards. Okay, I'm dipping again. I'm going to just leave it in there for a few seconds. Okay, I'm pulling it out. Now let's try not to bump anything. There's nothing coming off there. But I can see it up the needle. Probably you can too. I can hardly wait to get to the computer and see what I got here. Okay. Well, all that really proved was that you cannot use the point of a pin or a needle to apply CA glue to something. It just doesn't work. This is the second time now that I've tried it. I'm thinking that perhaps those people who thought it w would work or should work were just like me. You would think it should work. It makes perfect sense that it should work. But they actually never tried it. Uh, no, maybe they did and by some miracle for them it worked. Maybe a Maybe the needle was broken off and there was no point on the end of it or something. But what we did not see was what is actually happening to the CA glue on the needle. You know, can we, if we could see it a little clearer, could we see it? And when I was, you know, poking it around like that, yeah, you could see that nothing was coming off onto the, onto the plastic here or onto the paint, but you really didn't get a good look at the needle. So what I want to do is I want to hold the needle horizontally this time and we'll, we'll just put it on a, on a spot and I'll slowly rotate it. I'll try to hold it as steady as I can. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do the two camera thing. I'm just going to stick on the super macro and, and do it. Um, now, the good news is I was able to find the little piece and get it glued back on. The bad news is I broke our little mast off, but you can't tell. It, it almost looks like it's supposed to look like that. Uh, <laughs> I wondered how long it was going to be before that would happen, and I'm wondering how many more times I'm going to do it again. I am so clumsy. Okay, I've made a little hole here, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to, you know, get find it again after I dip the needle. So here we go. I'm going to dip the needle now. Put it in the hole. Okay, now let's just rotate this. Can we see what's going on there? Why is it not on the end? Do you notice how it sort of worked its way up from the tip? Well, I think we beat this to death. I, I really do. I, I don't think I can do anything more here. All I know is that the CA glue will not stay on the tip. You would think there would be a little, little bulb of, of CA glue right on the very tip, like there is a millimeter further back up. Okay, we beat it to death. Now, here I go thinking out loud again, but you know what? I'm wondering if possibly this system of using a needle to apply CA glue would actually work in a vacuum. Or would the CA glue just sort of boil away like water in the vacuum? You know, I do have a vacuum chamber in the basement. Those of you who watched my pen turning series, <laughs> yeah, I used that quite a bit. And it was quite effective. But would it work? I'm not going to bother, don't worry. I was thinking afterwards that maybe it might have been interesting if I had to show this being repaired. Put my hand behind it here, it'll silhouette it a little better. And uh, yeah, you can see the, the fracture right there. And just below it, there is a, a something that is supposed to be there. And uh, so this, at first glance, looks like it's just basically another detail and uh, all I did was I just I took a pair of tweezers in fact it it was this pair right here 
and I just held it with the tweezers. I dipped the bottom of the of the piece into CA thin, and then uh, stuck it on and held it for about oh, 10 seconds. When when I let go, it basically stayed the way you see it, only it was bent over just a little bit towards you. And then I, I just straightened it out. It was the CA glue was still um, uh, soft enough that it allowed for that. Right now, it's it's probably about as cured as it's going to get. I imagine that it is weaker here now than it was before, although the CA glue has built up around it pretty good, a sort of a weld all the way around. Anyway, uh, yeah. What I plan to do is I'm going to make something that's going to go around this and uh, protect it. But we're, we've got to finish up here first. Okay, there's absolutely nothing we can do about rail number two. Rail number three, we've pretty much got it in the right place there. So it's just rail number four here right now. And I think if I can, if I can cut it right there where the head of the pin is on. It would be nice if it would go in just butt up to the end of, of this one right here that the pin head is resting on. Uh, I don't know if I can get it that accurate. I, I can sort of maybe eat away at it. I'll put the macro lens on and swing around a, a little bit here and just see if I can be a little bit more careful on this one than I was on this one down here. I got a comment from Tennessee Jim and he was saying could you use your S word for something like what I'm doing right now. Now I'm going to explain in a moment why we call it the S word but I think probably a lot of you know. Anyway I commented back yeah I probably could I, I don't think that they would uh, you know this this soft brass will dull that hard steel maybe eventually it would but I don't think so I think this the steel in these scissors here is infinitely harder than this little piece of brass here but um, how would I know if I'm dulling it or not well there's actually a way I can check it before I cut and I can check it after I cut Now, if you are getting tired of seeing this microscope, um, well, it could be that this channel is not for you because I use it a lot. And uh, it's uh, being as it is part of this episode, I feel that I should show it being used here. And uh, Okay, I bought this from uh, B&H Photo in New York City several years ago, and I had no idea at the time how handy it was going to be. Um, yeah, I, I used it downstairs in my workshop when I was doing the pen turning to check on the finish on the pens, and 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 you can tell how sharp something is by looking at it. After a while, you you kind of get to know. So so the idea right now is <clears throat> I want to check and see how does it look before I cut the photo etch piece and how does it look after I cut it. And I'll be able to tell if I've dulled it. Uh, in fact, right now I'm backed off at its minimum power and I can actually see the imperfections in the grinding. It's good, but it's not surgically steel good. Now if I, if I zoom in a little bit, Now as I, as I zoom in I have to keep lifting up the the cutters. Okay, I'm I'm zoomed right in right now. See if I can hold it steady here. Yeah, I I can see. I'll be able to see very clearly if I damage this blade because I I can I can see the imperfections now and I'll I'll just know that if it's increased and I see a little nick or something like that. Um anyway, this is what I like to do. Now I just realized that I never did explain 
how it is that we ended up calling this the S word. Well, about, what was it, about six weeks ago we started doing the rigging. And pretty soon the comments started coming in. Why don't you get yourself a pair of scissors? And people were talking about scissors identical to what more or less I was holding I'm holding in my hand right now. And I was trying to make my own cutters by modifying a hobby knife or taking a pair of ordinary scissors and grinding them down and I was I was having fun you might say trying to make my own but people weren't catching on to that and they kept they thought I was being stubborn well maybe maybe I was a little bit but I don't think so and anyway I, I I didn't buy these until I was about ready to cut my last piece of rigging, which seems really strange, right? Anyway, one of the viewers, well, Tennessee Jim, he picked up on the fact that I was getting a little bit exasperated. He could tell that my comments were coming back as maybe being borderline uh, cheeky and uh, sarcastic. And uh, so rather than say scissors in his comment, he would call it the S word. And so that's how these got to be called the S word. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I know these are better. I was just trying to make my own. Okay, now let's put on the macro lens. Okay, here we are, kind of back where we were. Now my thinking is if I can nip this off so that it will butt up with this one that's just above it. Come on. Alright, is that going to butt up? Yeah, I think it did really well. Now I'm not going to do it on camera, but I'm going to check my scissors now. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Um, yeah, I'm going to check my scissors now and see if I if I dulled them, and I'll let you know. Okay, I checked the scissors, and I saw absolutely no sign of any kind of nicks or damage or anything like that to the cutter. I did see uh, quite a bit of paint residue though from where you know the paint kind of broke off uh, it was like little tiny chunks all over the place and, a, and a surprisingly a lot of it anyway um, you can see here that we can get this to match up pretty good I think now now this this one right here that does not look horizontal to you if you look straight in from the back, you can see it is horizontal. So what I want to do is just have this one here. If we bend it up just a little bit here. It would stay there all by itself. That would sure be nice. And that's pretty much it. It looks good from uh, my perspective anyway. They're budding together. Okay, let's get a little bit of... Well, maybe that's too much. See if I can knock some of that off. Okay, I got a little bit of it off there. Okay, now don't put any more on. How's our connection here? Is it cured? I do believe so. All right, let's see if we can maybe straighten up some of our railing here without breaking anything off. Like this one, for instance. Maybe I'd be better off using my my pointer here. I think this end will be okay. Just a 
a little bit more so it follows the uh, contour of the gunnel. If I want to press too hard, I'm going to snap something off somewhere. Now this one here maybe could come in. Well, I think what we'll have to do is just meticulously just go all the way along and just check it, check every inch. Now I was planning on just using uh, my hot glue gun here and put some sort of a... I wonder, can I put this on and still be able to paint? Not Maybe not very, very easily. Because I had wanted to paint the Fairlead the dark gray and then the railing the lighter gray. So I think maybe uh, I should do that now before I put these on and just try and be super careful here. This is Tamiya XF77 and we may as well paint over our boo-boo first here. Now I don't want to be filling in the detail down there, but I want the paint to all match. Maybe I'll have to, uh, I'm going to have to just aim the uh, camera down a bit so that you can see further down. A little, looks like I've got a little hair or something on it there. Now when, when this paint dries, it'll, it'll shrink a little bit. Okay, I better quit before it starts getting lumpy. Now, my main concern right now is to cover up the CA glue. I know that it's... Uh, I'll be using the smaller brush later. I just want to get get where it was really globbed on, like right there, and I don't want to touch the gunnel, but I can help it. Okay, now this that's part of the bullard right there. I mean fair lead. come in from the other side just a little bit if I can here. Okay, I'm hoping this is going to sort of self-level itself. Could be that the smaller paintbrush would be better for this. Um, I think I got too much on there, but get a little bit on the top here. Okay, I believe that's flowing all the way around the little blob of uh, CA. And uh, of course that railing doesn't touch anything, we don't need to worry about it. So let's just, maybe it's a little bit right there. like it all to match if I can get it to all match. Okay, let's let that dry and then we'll use the light gray and paint the railings. But that's gonna have to be tomorrow folks. Thanks for watching and all being well, we will see you tomorrow.